This video is for uh, to make students familiar with the uh, Greek alphabet that we use in physics. Uh, for some students, especially those who have not had a physics class before, uh, may not be familiar uh, so much with the Greek alphabet, and we use essentially all the Greek letters that are not uh, that are distinguishable from the Roman letters, and so you need to know what they are. Uh, I, I could probably just put this in writing. One of the reasons I made this video is to also show at least some of the tricks I've learned to write them in such a way I can distinguish them from other letters. It, it turns out, this may, may not be obvious, that uh, penmanship can play an important role when you're solving physics problems. If you have uh, dozens of letters and variables floating around, uh, they need to be distinguishable for you as well as anyone you're communicating with. All right, so I, I'm not an expert on this topic by any means, but I'll share some of the tricks that uh, I've learned through the years that at least have helped me. All right, so uh, let's, we'll do lowercase first. The first letter uh, is pretty straightforward. Alpha, write like that. Uh, beta, uh, I write like this. So I'm gonna, whenever I there, think there may be a problem, I'll sort of highlight it. The obvious thing about beta that runs into problems is you want to be able to distinguish it from a capital B. And so uh, I do that, I sort of emphasize this tail on the end of the B, and um, then and also make it a little more curved, the top the, the top tier curved, instead of just the uh, a, a more straight capital B. Okay, gamma is a little interesting. If you look at how computers typeset gamma, that can be kind of hard to reproduce to handwriting. I write a gamma just like an alpha that's turned 90 degrees. So delta, uh, as you can see, sort of the obvious problems that you can run into with uh, delta is um, it may look like a, a D or even sort of the, the partial derivative sign. And so, um, to do that, to distinguish for the delta, I, I make a very distinguishable tail here on the top to uh, to help me keep them apart. All right. So for uh, epsilon, I write that as looks like a C within a line in the middle. And that's to help that distinguish from sort of my E, which I make curved. Zeta doesn't look like anything. It just takes a long time to practice. Uh, so I write a zeta like this. So I sort of have two separate motions. If you'll see, I'm going to write it again. I, I sort of come down a little curve like that at the top, then a big curve in the in the opposite direction, and then a, a third curve at the bottom. And that just takes a while to practice to get used to doing that. We won't, I don't think we have a zeta in this class. Uh, it's not used that often. All right, eta. So my eta, I, I um, write like that. The main problem with eta, of course, is distinguishing it from an n. And so to do that, uh, I sort of get this. My, I have a little curve at the top instead of just a straight line. And my first uh, end, I take, I don't bring all the way down, just partially. And then the second leg comes much further down, and I usually add a little tail to it. And so that's the main problem with eta is, is to distinguish it from your n. Theta is usually not a problem. Uh, kappa is a nightmare because you have to distinguish kappa from both uh, capital and small k's. So <laughs> what I do with a kappa is you need to establish that from a small and a capital K. Usually the key, what I do to keep kappa in my own mind is as I make it small relative to my other letters, and I'll just add it over here. And the other thing I do is when I bring the top angle in, my bottom angle does not come from the vertex, but comes from about the middle of the top line where I keep my K's, both both uh, angles coming into the vertex. And so that's at least in my own notation how I keep my kappas straight from my K's. Lambdas, usually not a problem. It looks like that. Uh, mu is a problem. Of course, the main the you don't want your mu to be confused with your 
you. So to do that, I, I always emphasize that initial tail into the mu. Nu is another huge problem. So I write my news like that. I highly exaggerate the curves. The problem, of course, with the, the new is to be confused with the V or the U or anything like that. So I, I emphasize sort of how my both sides of my new are concaved the same way. And that helps me distinguish it from the, the other Roman letters. All right, the next one is uh, Xi, <laughs> and this is another one like Zeta. It doesn't look like anything, it's just hard to write. And so I do this in kind of three motions. And so there, there's a Xi. <laughs> so again, I, I kind of give a little top, just like there was on the Zeta, this little kind of a, a top uh, curve like that. And then I come back with a smaller curve around. And then I have, which looks kind of like an S, a little tail on the end for Xi. To be honest, where most people run into problem with the Xi is they confuse it for the Chi. So there, sorry, I shouldn't put that here. I'll put it. Chi, which we'll get to down here, looks like that, which kind of looks like an X. Since Xi starts with the Roman letter X, sometimes they, they confuse those two, but okay. So this is a Xi. Pi, everyone's familiar with, Rho. Um, rho is most commonly confused in, in penmanship with a small p. So to do that, I make sure my Rho is, is quite curved in, in sort of one motion. I loop around and then I exaggerate the tail whereas my P is uh, straight up and down. Okay, uh, sigma is uh, not often confused with anything else. As long as you make sure you uh, have a strong tail at the top, you don't want, you know, if you don't have a, a large enough tail, it can be confused with an O or a zero. So you wanna make sure you have that, uh, uh, this part coming off the top of your sigma. All right, tau. Uh, tau is is most uh, commonly confused with T's, small and capital, and so to do that, I exaggerate the the wavy line. So it's like a T with a with a wavy line on top, and I I sort of exaggerate that so I can distinguish them. All right, phi. Um, I don't have a problem with phi because I have a circle and a slash through it, and so that's not a problem for me. Um, However, some people write their zeros that way. Some people will write zeros with a line with a slash through it to distinguish it from O's, presumably. I don't do that, but some people do. So if that's a problem, then you need your phi has to, has to be different than that. Uh, what I would recommend then is uh, when you make your circle on the phi, don't connect. Don't connect, but come back through before you get to the top and make a phi that looks something like that, that you can clearly distinguish between your, your zero. And so that's a, a, another way that you can write the phi. Okay, so now chi, of course, chi has a problem uh, with the x. And so to, to do that, I always exaggerate this initial curve. So I have this, this uh, initial bend in the top of my chi. I also make it larger than my, than my small x. And so that's sort of my distinguishing characteristic. All right, uh, psi takes a little bit, maybe some practice to, to get right. I start with a little curve on top and then, and then, and then a lower curve and then a, a slash through it. If you don't, haven't made a lot of those in, in your time. Um, and then finally, omega is a, is a, problem, uh, obviously, with the W. And so there, uh, I've, in fact, I've changed my high end writing in this regard. I used to make uh, uh, omegas like W, I used to make my W's like this, just rounded. Uh, but I don't anymore. I keep my Roman W's with uh, sharp cor my distinction is I keep them with sharp corners on the bottom, and then rounded corners for my omega. All right, so just for uh, completeness, let's do some of the capital letters that are common used. There's usually not problems with these as far as uh, uh, 
penmanship is concerned, there's the capital gamma, looks like a flipped L. Uh, delta is the triangle. Uh, theta, a capital theta, a big circle with kind of like a capital H in the middle. Lambda is just the triangle without the bottom part. Uh, C, which you don't see that often, but sometimes three parallel lines where the the middle one is shorter. Uh, capital pi is just like pi but bigger. Sigma is, is very common, capital sigma. And then phi looks like just the phi with bars on top. Same with psi. Same like psi with bars on top. And then capital omega is very common. Okay, and so some of that is to, to familiarize yourself with the Greek letters and, and uh, some take a little bit of practice to get right. The main important thing is that for you, in your writing, you can uh, distinguish them. Uh, let, just let me take a, a minute to, to look at a couple of the Roman letters from this uh, same perspective. For example, I've changed my handwriting uh, when I started physics. So, for example, my Y's now look like this. Uh, when before they didn't. I used to have my Y's like this. But it, when you start writing fast, they look too much like X's. And uh, I got started getting confused. So I, I emphasize the, the, this, the sort of tail on my Y. The other thing I do is I always put a slash through my Z because uh, my Z's and my 2's look identical without doing that. And so I would put a slash here to distinguish my Z from my 2. The other thing I do is when I'm doing math, my I put a tail on my T's. Otherwise, they start to get uh, with a plus sign. Start to look like plus signs is another problem. I I emphasize my uh, the tail on my U. That's a that's another thing. I used to just do U's like this, but that can get confused with V's and and other things. So I I emphasize a tail on my U. I also do put a tail on my I as well, easily distinguishable from J that way, but also if you start writing fast, you can just get, <laughs> you know, start to get two dots. And so I, emphasizing a tail, um, a little bit on the I helps me there. Okay, so uh, it, again, the, it's not a big deal, but something that you, you want to think about is you're trying to keep things straight in your own mind and help yourself when you might have lots of variables running around, as well as communicating to others through writing so they understand what you're doing. It's not a big deal, but a little bit of care, and, and you'll be able to, to communicate uh, these symbols more clearly.